of events that will happen several times, or similar kinds of events that will happen repeatedly. It's not efficient to build systems from scratch every time to do similar things. This is where learning to build your own blueprints will save you time and effort. It's also worth learning about blueprints so that you can integrate your work with other designers. Understanding blueprints is going to allow you to interact with the rest of the team on a deeper level, transforming you from somebody providing a service to somebody who's actually sharing in the development of the project. In the demonstration village level, there's a wooden bridge here, just on the outskirts of the village as we go across to the magic forest. And there's also a wooden jetty here in the lakeside. Sometimes when the player walks across these, we might want to play a nice wooden creek sound, just to support their sense of presence in the world. We're going to implement this in a couple of ways. Firstly, we're going to do it in the slow, hard way, using the level blueprint. And then we're going to look at how we might create our own actor blueprint to make the system a lot more reusable. So to create this system in the level blueprint, the first thing we want to do is to add a trigger to our level. So we're going to grab a box trigger here, drag it in, cycle through the widgets to change its dimensions so that the player is going to collide with that as they walk across the jetty. Then with that still selected in the level, we're going to open our level blueprint and we're going to right click, add event for that trigger box, collision, add on act to begin overlap. So when the player walks through that, it's going to trigger something to happen. You might remember from an earlier video where we were using triggers to switch sounds from outside to inside to fake occlusion, that what we did at this point is to actually check that it's the player actor that's overlapping with that. We don't want this creak sound to be firing off when perhaps a bird or a bee actor happens to be moving around the level and collides with it. So the first thing we're going to do here is just get the player character and we're going to see if that is equal to the character that's just walked through the trigger. Use a branch node to root this event and if it's true we'll carry on. And when we carry on what we want to do is to play a sound. So play sound and we're going to play that sound at the location of the jetty. So play sound at location. Go back into our viewport and we'll grab the jetty itself, we'll right click in the level blueprint to create a reference to it and we'll drag out of that in order to get the actor's location and feed that into our play sound at location. Now I've made a creak sound already in our audio folder so this is just a typical sound cue here where we've got a choice of random creak sounds with a bit of modulation. So with that sound cue selected in the content browser, I can now assign that to my play sound at location. So as the player walks through, they're going to trigger that trigger box. We just check to make sure it is the player. If it is the player, play that sound at location. Now, we might not want that to happen every single time the player walks through it. So there's a couple of ways to approach this. One, we could add some blank inputs to our random so that sometimes this will fire off with nothing, no sound attached, so you won't hear the creak. Or the other thing we can do is actually to put something in here that's going to make sure that sound only gets played once when we first walk through it. And then perhaps we block off that system for a little while until later on the player might walk through it and we'll play the sound again. So in here, we'll add a do once and that node does exactly what it says. It only allows the event to go through once. Now, if we wanted that to only creak once and that's it, we'd leave it like that. But actually after a while, we probably want to turn that system back on again. So what we'll do is we'll add a delay and we'll say, Okay, we'll give it six seconds. If the player happens to come back and come over the walkway again during that time, we're going to pull that over and reset the do once. So that means the system will be back in play. So we're on our walkway. Do once, come back through. You don't hear it until after six seconds. That should have been reset by now. The do, the do once has been reset. And it's now operational again. 
So that's all very good, but what about our other bridge? If we come over here, we want some creeks going on here as well. What we'd have to do is to recreate that entire system for this one. And then what if our level had 50 bridges in it? Would we really want to spend a couple of days going through all of those bridges and adding this blueprint so that we get a nice creek when we walk over it? It seems a bit inefficient. So what we're going to look at now is how to create a blueprint actor that we make once and then we can reuse around the level whenever we want that sound effect. So we're going to start by deleting all this and we'll go back to our lakeside, get rid of that trigger because now all of these components are actually going to be within our blueprint actor. In our audio folder, blueprints, we're going to create a new blueprint actor. So we're going to add new blueprint class. It's going to be an actor. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call it Creek Demo. And we're going to double click it. And this is what we're presented with. The first thing we want to add here to this blueprint actor is a collision component, like the trigger that we had in the level. So if we search for collision, we can see we've got a box collision that we can add here and we can resize it. We can compile the actor, drag and drop it into the level and see if it's the kind of size that's appropriate. So we might want to go back to that blueprint, just extend it in this direction a little bit. So that's going to work for our walkways. In the event graph of the blueprint, we now want to create an event when that box is collided with. So add an event for the box collision, add on component begin overlap. So this is just like we did with the trigger in the level blueprint. Again, what do we want that to do? We want that to play sound at location. Now this time the location is going to be whatever the location of this blueprint actor is. So we'll just drag out there and we'll go get actor location and it's actually getting the location of itself. We need our sound asset assigned here. So back to the content browser, audio, find our creek and assign it. So this blueprint actor will now play our sound. And if we wanted the sound over by the other bridge, we can simply take another copy of that blueprint actor, just rotate it. And now this bridge has a creek sound. So instantly, it's much more reusable. If you remember, we want to put that check in that it definitely is the player character. So we get player character. Is that equal to the player character branch? Yes, it is. Now, last time we did a do once to stop this sound repeating, but now we're going to add a slightly different approach. What I'm going to do is create another branch here. And from this condition, I'm going to look for a random bool with weight. So this condition is a Boolean condition. It's either true or false. And this random bool with weight allows us to weight the probability of it being true or false. So at the moment, it's got a weight of 0.5. That means 50% of the time, this will be true. And so 50% of the time, our sound will play. We can change that. Say we wanted 70% or we wanted it quite rare. Let's go down to 30% of the time. So as that comes through here, the players overlapped with the collision on the box and it is definitely the player so it comes through here then we've got another branch kind of blocking that event and it's going to ask the question can you generate a random bool and weight that random bool to be have a 30 percent chance of being true so now in the game our blueprint actor has a 30 percent chance of being true and playing the sound At that time it wasn't true Again, that time it was. So now we have a reusable blueprint that has a 30% chance of playing this particular sound. And we can dot that around our level very quickly and easily. Now with this knowledge of blueprints, what you could do is work closely with your colleagues and actually embed your sounds into a blueprint that contains both the graphics and the sound system. So in this case, we could work with the artists and create a 
bit of the wooden walkway here that actually is a blueprint that encompasses those graphics and our sound system. And then as the artists are adding those walkways around the level, your sounds are automatically assigned to them. An example of where we might want to do this in this level is down in the caves. You can see we've got these fire torches here and there's quite a lot of them. So what we might want to do is find the blueprint, open that up, and actually add in an audio component to that blueprint so that every fire torch automatically will have the appropriate audio attached to it. So if we add component, audio component here, you can see we've got the same settings that are familiar to us now. Here's our sound. We'll find our fire loop here and attach that. Now we'll also want to give it some attenuation settings with an attenuation asset. So we'll assign that there. And then when we go back to the blueprint and look in the viewport, you can see that that audio component is there and its attenuation settings are visible. Compile that, go back to the level, and you can see that each fire torch has that sound attached and you can see the attenuation visible as well. So now we can have a play. Each torch in the level automatically has that sound attached to it. We've looked at how blueprints can help stop you doing repetitive tasks, how you can create your own and how you can collaborate with other designers to add audio to the game world through their blueprints. We'll look at how we can make this blueprint even more adaptable and more reusable.